All right, welcome to how to make a Pokemon aesthetic type beat. Just kidding. Not really. Anyways, the first thing that you want to do is find yourself a sample. Uh, most of you guys know me for my music because I use samples a lot, so that's usually where I start. I'm not really going to get into where I find samples because that's it's kind of long, and I'll just save it for another video, but regardless, just find yourself a sample that you like. First and foremost, if the sample by itself doesn't make you do this shit... Damn! Then it's not worth using. So once you know that your sample is certified gas, you're gonna want to start chopping it. I personally sample by dropping the audio file directly into the little timeline thing and then just going from there. I know a lot of people use direct wave and slice X, but this is just the way that I taught myself how to do it. So I've been doing it that way ever since. You want to find the parts that you like the most out of the sample and utilize those. I really like the very beginning of the sample and this little breakdown part later on in the song. Also something to keep in mind, for your sample you want to drop a lot of the low end out of it so your 808s don't clash with it and make it sound like shit. I've heard way too many songs where the low end of the sample isn't cut out and it just sounds like... So please, if you're using prominent 808s, cut the low end out of your sample. So once your sample is nice and chopped up and sounding good, you want to move on to adding some other instruments. But before we do that, a lot of people ask me what I use on my master channel to get, you know, better mixes and how to make shit sound like, I don't know, more clear. And I'm going to plug you guys with some ultra secret shit. Yep, that looks about right. No, really all you guys are looking for is in Maximus. For me, it is at least. A lot of people use a lot of different plugins, but the one that I've stuck to for all these years is Maximus on the channel. And I know, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to see this shit on Twitter. Oh, your MCM uses Maximus on the Master Channel. Bitch, yes I do. And it sounds good. But no, really, I'll leave my settings that I use for that in the description. Just so I can help you guys out. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get into putting some instruments on this. I usually start off with the hi-hats because it kind of, you know, instills the initial rhythm or the uh, core rhythm of the beat. Most of the stuff I use just requires a steady, like, two-beat hi-hat. A lot of people ask me what I do for hi-hat rolls and snare rolls and shit, and honestly, this pattern is golden. I use it more than any other pattern in FL Studio. This one-sixth measure, shit is gas. I, I, I always use it. When I'm looking for hi-hats to use, I kind of have a signature sound that I stick to. It's like that really like heavy metallic kind of hi-hat sound. So if you can imagine in your head like throwing a fucking ice cube across a sheet of metal or something, or like throwing a rock into a frozen lake, that's almost the sound you want to go for. So shit like this. Yeah, that's good. I usually follow that up with a snare. And you guys have probably noticed in a lot of my music, I just start out with that standard like... 2009 ass trap snare but i usually like to alter it in different ways like mess with the pitch and the imaging and you know mixing and stuff so i usually use that as the bass but then i add a lot of shit on top of it as well the kind of end product that you're going for should be something that has like a lot of body and like presence to it but not also super overwhelming also something to keep in mind, you want to have it panned kind of evenly throughout everything. You don't want it just jammed right in the middle because then it sounds like it sounds garbage. After that, I usually put in the kicks and you guys probably know me for this one kick that I use a lot. And you really don't have to use this specific kick. You just want to go for that like really hard thump and then just kind of blare the sound out of it. You want to have a distortion, but you don't want it to be like you don't want it to sound like you're having a heart attack whenever that shit hits, you know? Following the kicks, I usually put in the 808s, and when you're laying in 808s, you want to have it like, it's also another core part of the rhythm. You want it to have heart, you want it to have melody, you know? You don't want it to just be like one note usually. If you've ever taken a look at my music, I usually try and have at least four or five different note variations in the bass. Just keep shit exciting. You don't want it to be like super loopy sounding and, you know, boring. So the more melodic you can get with it, the better. But don't go crazy. It, I mean, it, it, it's a bass. Like it's an 808. It's not a damn like lead keyboard. So don't go too crazy on it. 
And as you'll notice, my actual 808 isn't super loud. People ask me a lot how I get my 808 so loud, but if you pay attention, it's really not my 808 that's loud. It's my kicks that are loud that's backing just a really clean 808. You don't really need like an overwhelming presence from the 808. You just need something clean that has like a good amount of mids just backed with a really punchy kick. That's what makes shit sound clean. It's not the volume of the 808, it's just the presence of it. You want it to sound good. And at this point, you kind of already have the entire beat done. You just need to add like variations to certain parts. From there, you just kind of organize the rest of the beat. Of course, add your sound effects, which is like 10 out of 10 times just random Nintendo effects that I use. If you have any of my kits, you'll know. I always incorporate, you know, Nintendo sounds. Yeah! <laughs> I have a plethora of them in there. You just want to find unique little touches like that. And that's essentially it. It's not super hard. Anyways, I hope this video came to be of some help. If you guys need any more assistance or if you have questions or whatever the hell, just either email me or drop a comment down below and I'll respond to you guys. Uh, thanks.